I'm Felicia from KKCR Kauai Soapbox and Eric, um, if I'm remembering correctly, you're from Hilo, is that right? Yep, from Hilo side. Um, on, on island of Hawaii. On the island of Hawaii. So have you been following what's going on on Mauna Kea? Uh, yeah, I've been following what's been going on on Mauna Kea kind of real extensively since about 2011 when I was uh, first uh, asked to uh, be part of the very first uh, botanical survey up on the mountain. Um, so I wound up becoming the field crew leader, uh, kind of being in charge of about six other people, documenting all the plants on the, the, on, the um, on the mountain up there. And uh, ever since then, I've been kind of following um, various different um, aspects of development on the mountain uh, with a particular focus on that of uh, the plant communities that you find there. And so are, are you okay with the, the telescope going in? I mean, how do you feel about it? You think it's no big deal? Is it going to impact anything? Um, so there is definitely some problems with the telescope uh, where they're proposing to do it. Uh, in 2011, when I was working um, for the first ever botanical survey ever up there, uh, we spent about six months walking all around the mountain, checking out various areas. And one of the areas we had to check out was that of the telescope. Uh, proposed uh, 30 meter telescope area and um, from afar it looks like uh, it's just pohaku it's just rock but once you start getting on your hands and knees and looking underneath all the rocks there you find uh, unique plant communities and vegetation that uh, as far as I know I've never seen anywhere else and on the mountain uh, it's one of the few places you can find something like that um, so we're talking about mosses, lichens, plants, uh, grasses, ferns that you can't find anywhere else. And one of the big issues with the proposed telescope is that it has to meet the criteria for uh, conservation district use permit process. And there's eight criteria of which two um, stick out in my mind as being possible issues. And that one of them is uh, preserving the physical uh, environment that's there and not substantially impacting the natural resources of that area. Um, now with a telescope that's proposed to, I believe, take about the size of a football field in terms of the development area, we're looking at uh, you know, grubbing and grading or removing rocks and plant, plant and moss and lichen communities that um, would no longer be there. I think they're gonna go about 20 feet deep, I think, to put the foundation in, something like that. 20 feet, so we're talking about rocks that, you know, maybe this tall and right underneath them, so not even six, you know, six inches underneath. You have these really unique uh, communities that, uh, you know, from afar it looks like nothing, but you gotta realize that these, these plants are surviving in some of the harshest conditions ever, up at, you know, close to 14,000 feet elevation where there's not, too much rain and when there is precip precipitation it's heavy snowfall that eventually evaporates out but because these unique communities where these pohaku and these rocks are are laid and positioned they, they can um, have water drip down from the snow melt and create these you know unique uh, little mini ecosystems within there. I went to the University of Hawaii at Hilo where I uh, received my master's of science in tropical conservation, biology, and environmental science. I also went to UH Hilo for my bachelor's of science in environmental science. Um, and I had just finished my graduate work at the time. And uh, someone at the university had, had recommended that I be really good for the job, um, working as a botanical surveyor, um, leading a crew of people on the mountain. I had previously done a lot of other work. Um, so I got hired through the Office of Mauna Kea Management to um, do this assessment of figuring out what kind of plant communities are over there, documenting where each, each one of these plants are. Um, so there's over 80 species that are on the mountain that we have maps for, for where all they're located, um, which was later published into uh, part of the uh, Mauna Kea management plan. So when you did this, were they already going to be putting the telescope in? Were you looking, were you sourcing before the telescope? Or so was this, a so this, this, this project had nothing directly to do with the 
uh, 30 meter telescope. This project uh, was piggybacking in an area, I guess, where they were um, where they were proposing to do the development. It wasn't a direct environmental impact uh, statement, but it was rather just a uh, a uh, study to inventory all the plant resources on the mountain, um, not just looking at the TMT, but looking at the whole entire mountain. And so for me, looking at comparing the area where the 30 meter telescope is to all the other different unique environments on the mountain, the area where they're proposing to do the development there has a very unique plant and lichen and moss community that you can't find at other elevations, at other sides of the mountain. And every part of the mountain is unique in its own way, but uh, the area where they're proposing the 30 meter telescope um, has its own unique uh, composition of plants and other um, so life forms. Where would they find the inventory of this? Would it be, um, is it on a record somewhere or can you post it? Um, the Office of Mauna Kea Management is supposed to have all this published uh, and available to the public. Um, I only was able to do the baseline data and do the, the raw data. I wasn't in charge of doing the final write-ups for these things, but the data um, is used in different tables and um, to, uh, for, for the public for knowledge of things. So in your opinion, this TMT is going to disrupt that, that ecosystem? The TMT is going to disrupt the natural and physical environment of the proposed area where they're going to do the telescope and is also going to, in my opinion, substantially impact the natural resources that are there. So did you get the opportunity to work on that job? Did you want to work on it? Have you applied for anything up there? Why'd you come to Kauai? I mean, So we were commissioned for uh, about six or eight months to go work on this project where we gather the data for where all these plants are on the mountain, put them into a database, map them out, and that was it. Right after that, the Office of Mauna Kea Management uh, in the fall of, I believe, 2011 had a, um, a job opening for the environmental resource uh, manager on the mountain, uh, of which I applied for, and I believe several of my other uh, colleagues at the time had applied for, none of which, uh, none of us um, had even uh, received a job interview for the process. Uh, Kind of a little bit weird when you consider people that spend, you know, five days a week for months at a time doing 10, 12 hour days just out in the field and then another four hours of data uh, 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 write ups each evening. Um, it's kind of really interesting that you have people that have such an intimate experience with the, with the mountain that have uh, such a good foundation already of understanding the resources that are there. Because you that guys they were typically born and raised there? Yeah, and um, I, the other thing is, you know, we all went to school there. Um, we all had backgrounds in, in environmental um, uh, uh, understandings of the dynamics of the island, especially because we were all University of Hawaii at Hilo graduates. So not only did we understand Hawaii, but we understood the island, the big island, the, the island of Hawaii, um, I would say uh, very, very intimately, very, very well, very, very, very um, with robustly. it. Yeah, so, robustly. So, so who did they put in that job? Honestly, yeah. I uh, don't remember at the moment. I do know that uh, he wasn't anyone that uh, was someone that was uh, from, known. Was he from Hawaii? Um, he wasn't as far as I know. I don't know if they have a new person now. Um, Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wondered because a lot of times uh, jobs and, you know, building up their own people. So, so do you have a final statement on Mauna Kea and the TMT? Your thoughts? Or I appreciate your sharing this information. Where the site of the TMT is proposed to be located, if you just stand up from afar, it looks like it's just Pohaku, it's just rock. To me, Pohaku are sacred. Beyond the sacredness, the science of it is that there are plants, there are mosses, there are lichens, there are organisms out there that are naturally occurring underneath these rocks. There are physical environments. The proposed TMT area will 
disrupt those environments, if not altogether eliminate them. We don't know if, they, if these are the only places where these species exist. And, you know, when we were charged out there with, you know, a, a handful of, of workers out there looking every day, we could only do so much. And right now, as far as I know, the, the Office of Mauna Kea Management doesn't have a full resource team out there doing all that work. And even if they did, it takes years of understanding and it's preposterous that we should even think about developing something when we don't even have a firm understanding of our own resources and you know as someone who's the office of Mauna Kea management is charged in protecting and preserving our resources as well as you know expanding the natural environment that's there and all this science blah 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 but if you cannot understand your resources that are there in the first place how can you really go forward and and figuring out how to manage and develop areas on the mountain and i guess we could safely say it's not just a bunch of rocks no it's not just a bunch of rocks not just a bunch of rocks yeah thank you